This is the story of a man and his yellow scooter on a journey across Canada, a trip that will take him through fields, forests, and many Tim Hortons, the type of trip that will change a man forever. The only question now is, will he make it? Where did this scooter come from? And why the hell would I want to drive it across the country? Why not just use a car or a real motorcycle? Why choose to spend so much time alone? Well, the story begins last summer. It was mid-pandemic, I was bored, and I found this beauty on Facebook Marketplace. I fell in love from the very first time I saw this thing. The only little issue is that I needed a motorcycle license. And so I signed up for classes, four months go by, and I pass my test. I can now drive this thing legally. I use it all the time, all around my city. <laughs> but I have this idea that I can't get out of my mind. What if I drove my scooter across Canada? Reason number one, I haven't seen my brother in almost a year and he lives across the country. Two, I'm unhappy in Montreal. I feel I'm too comfortable. I've never solo traveled before. I need change. What you're about to see is not a car. It's not a motorcycle. What you're about to see is a totally new form of personal transportation. So how realistic is this trip? Well, the scooter itself is a 244cc, meaning I can go up to about 100 kilometers an hour and meaning I can drive it on the highway legally. There's a 4,500 kilometer distance from here to my brother's. And since I plan on taking a month to get there, that's 150 kilometers a day. Now some days I'll do much more, but also some days I'll do nothing. Ultimately, the real challenge here will be myself. 30 days is a lot of time. Time to think, time to feel. How will I feel? So one of my main goals for this trip is getting comfortable with the idea of being alone. I've traveled to a lot of places in my life, but surprisingly never solo. And so the scooter trip is really symbolic of this goal of mine. I thought that by forcing myself to be alone for an entire month, I would have no choice but to embrace it and hopefully learn to love it.
nearly half of my trip would be spent in the province of Ontario. Over 2,000 kilometers of pretty much the same thing every single day. Most of the time I just camp wherever I could. I had everything organized in my back trunks along with some lighter stuff in my backpack. My life became this routine of waking up, packing my tent, driving a couple hours, stopping along the way at whatever site there was to see, driving some more. Around sunset, I'd look for a low-key spot to set up my tent, or on some days, treat myself to a motel. After some time, I began feeling lonely. I wanted to have someone to share these moments with, and so I decided to try couch surfing. I was hosted by a man who was even lonelier than I was. As if our individual loneliness had brought us together. We talked for hours and hours. And it was really nice because I hadn't had a proper conversation with anyone for days. It was exactly what I needed and I think it was the same thing for him too. He's about to use the emergency oil backup container, <laughs> just in case his rings are going bad. One day with him was perfect. It gave me the energy to keep on going. And after that day, I never really felt lonely again. It was the first time I was actually enjoying my trip. I just got kicked out from my camping spot and the guy was not too happy because it's the second time he told me to leave and I just hid and he caught me again so it's kind of awkward but yeah, gotta find a new camping spot. It's 1am in the Sault Ste. Marie. Dear Diary, I'm actually starting to enjoy this lifestyle. I like being somewhere new where no one knows me, where it seems so much easier to be myself. I will say though that Ontario is a big ass province and I'm looking forward to making it to Manitoba. My only wish is that my scooter remains healthy. I just experienced my first crash. I guess I came in too fast and I ended up on the gravel here. Floor, and as soon as I hit the gravel, my bike skid and fell to the side. Just as I was about to make it to Manitoba, I crashed. So, I just got a flat tire. <laughs> the same day that I crashed my bike, it was just a shit day. I began doubting if I could even make the trip. I was barely halfway across and my scooter was already having a hard time keeping up. What if I had to stop? What if I had to give up? I made it to Manitoba worried, but also very glad Ontario was behind me. Oh, stupid. Manitoba is not really known to be the most exciting of provinces, but to me and my family, this place is very, very special. So I grew up to a French mom and an English Canadian dad. I went to French school in an English neighborhood inside of a French province, inside of a mostly English country. And so it's safe to say that both French and English have had very big impacts on who I am today. But 
There's one part of my French heritage which I haven't really explored yet, and surprisingly, it comes from my dad's side. Usually people associate French Canadians to Quebec, but there are also quite a few Franco-Manitobans, and one of them happens to be my grandma. I made the detour to the town where she grew up because I've only ever been as a kid and I want to get to know her better, I want to understand where she came from. All I know from this place is what I've heard from stories and the famous little house that she grew up in. I'm quite close to my grandma. She's the only immediate family we have in Canada. She doesn't live in this town anymore, she lives in Montreal with us, but I did get to meet my great-grandparents for the first time. It was interesting going through my past, getting a better idea of what kind of conditions she grew up in. I could better visualize the summers my dad used to spend there as a kid. I even met an older guy um, who remembered her from when she was a teenager. He said, oh, your grandma, she was so beautiful back then, you know? Riding a scooter or a motorcycle means that you can't listen to music. You're constantly immersed in your environment. On my scooter, I can't regulate the temperature. I have no shelter from the wind or the rain. All I have to listen to is the sound of my engine. And so I think the beauty in that is that you have literally nothing else to do than drive. And considering how large Canada is, that leaves a lot of room for introspection. Never in my life had I had so much time to think. Usually, um, there's always distractions, you know? Here, I had literally nothing else to do than figure out what I want to do with my life. Especially out here in the prairies, it was the perfect place to do so. And it was funny because everyone told me that the prairies would be long, would be boring. But on the contrary, I actually found it quite meditative here. I feel, I feel better today. I feel like I finally started to embrace this lifestyle. It's been almost a month since I left the house, which is crazy. But I've been enjoying it. I mean, lots of ups and downs, but today was a good day. And it's really peaceful, you know? You really do get that, that clarity in your mind that I was sort of searching for. And most of all, I'm just excited to see my brother. Um, see the mountains, spend some time with him. Throughout my whole life, I've taken for granted the fact that my siblings lived nearby. Last year, for the first time, my brother moved. He fell in love with the mountains and never came back. And it's definitely been something to get used to not having him around anymore. This is the longest I've been away from him.
It's true what they say about Alberta. They really do love that oil. Julian had come a long way. He was so close to the end, but still had the mountains to cross. And so the question remains, will he make it? Hello, hello. I have made it to Alberta. Night or one of my last nights alone. A lot's gonna change, and then I'll probably miss being alone on my own. So, I'm trying to appreciate these moments. Last leg of the journey until we make it to Banff, to the mountains. It's funny because when I was in Ontario and even Manitoba, Saskatchewan, it was never ending. Like, never ending. <laughs> like, I was literally riding and riding and I would look at the map and I was like, fuck, like, I have such a long way to go. And it's crazy to think that I actually made it. at Lake Louise, Alberta. And this place is very special to our family because it's where my parents met. I feel excited. I feel content. At some point I was feeling wrong, but now I kind of, I'm already sad that it's already the end. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think I learned a lot about myself. I think I'm getting slowly more comfortable with being alone. Ah, oh, my little scooter, I love you. I love you very, very much. You've been a great scooter. Great scooter. I would recommend. I'm so afraid when I have to take off the bandaid and, and look at my scar. I really like, oh, I think that's gonna throw me off. It feels good though to let it air out. I made it to my brother's. It was actually good timing because he opened his collarbone a couple days prior. My friend Clara happened to be there at the same time. It felt nice going from being alone to being with two of my favorite people. Pick up um. Woo! Take me Come back to this. your breath. Don't think, just jump. You. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
He's dead. Rip. I left Montreal because I was unhappy. Now, I'm not saying escaping is always the solution for unhappiness, and I wouldn't necessarily say I feel that much happier now, but I do feel proud, and I do feel that things are clearer in my mind. I feel more comfortable in solitude. I feel I know my country better, my family history. Plus, I got to see my brother again. And very importantly, I got to make this video. I think a large part of my unhappiness was coming from the fact I stopped filming for myself. From here, I keep on going. You see, I left Montreal with no real plans on coming home and to be honest, I don't feel ready just yet. <laughs> Touch me. Take me over. Feel like I can hold it. And you 